Okay, today I want to take a look at um, how you would utilize your table of values um, to help fully, you know, shorten your arithmetic if you were trying to take uh, values and plugging them into some nasty polynomial curve. Um, and you also um, need to know how to switch between ask and auto, all right, which will allow you then to input the values you need on your TI-84. All right, so um, I've got a function here that looks like a pretty nasty one with a bunch of decimals of which I would not want to work out by hand. All right, and then let's say for whatever reason I might need to have an XY table and I would need to know the uh, Y values of this function when with these given X values. All right, so um, first of all, you need to go and put that uh, function into your graphing calculator. So you're going to do y equals, and then you would enter the function. So 0 0.024x raised to the third power. All right, again, that cursor is up there in that exponent, so you're going to want to arrow right, uh, to the right to finish putting the um, function in. Minus 0.61x, and then minus... 3.8. Okay, now um, no reason to, if all I'm trying to do is fill in an XY table, I do not need to look at the graph or anything, but I can automatically go and look at the table feature. To get to the table, I would hit second and then table. All right, and it takes me to a table of values. All right, now this one has already all been filled in, and there's some random values of x here. All right, so I'm suspecting that um, probably the calculator is automatically set to the auto thing. So I'm going to go in, I'm going to go look at that table set and see really what it is set at. If I do second and then table set, all right, this is my setup for my table. All right, it tells me that my table is going to start at 2. All right, I'm going to do uh, increments of 1, and um, it is set to auto. The independent variable, which is your x variable, is set to auto. So it automatically generated values in the xy table that you saw in there. Okay, so I'm going to want to switch it. If I want to set it up so that I can put these values of x in, I want it to be on ask. So I'm going to arrow down till I get to it, and you notice that's blinking right there. I'm going to arrow to the right because I want it to be on ask, and then I'm going to hit enter. Okay, that's going to switch it. All right, now if I go now back to my table, let's see what happens. Second table. All right, so on this particular one, um, it really did clear it out. So I have no values in there right now because it's waiting on me to input some values. All right, um, so 21.6, so I can just enter 21.6. Six and then hit enter and then when I do that it generated the y value for me so then I could come over here and well, let's go look at that again 224.89 so 224.89 okay so way better than having to do this by hand I come back over here I can enter 40 now and hit enter that's my x value it gives me the y value of 1507.8 so 1507.8 all right and the calculator is um, choosing to round appropriately it's it's making whatever's fix, uh, fitting in that area um, the, that's how it's choosing to round right now so let's arrow up and then let's arrow over to that y value okay so it really did it is showing 0.8 there all right here that one so I arrowed up to that first one all right 224.8 it gave me 8, 9, so it chose to round out two places. All right, but there's the actual decimal. If you actually arrow over and highlight over it, then you can actually see what that entire decimal was. Okay, um, just thought I'd throw that in there. All right, let's go ahead and enter the last one of 56.3. All right, hit enter. All right, it's giving me 4,244.7. So... 4,244.7. Again, that is a value that is being rounded, and if I needed to, maybe um, in the directions it said I had to go out two places, in which case then I would have to arrow over to that value, look at it down here, and then I could actually enter two if I needed to. So I could say 0.74 if I had to go out two places in that chart. All right, I could do the same thing. Well, on the one above, we said it was a zero, so if you had to take your chart out two places. All right. Um, now, let's uh, go on. If you fill up all of these values, let's just keep putting random values in. If I keep them putting in random, you're eventually going to run out of spot. However, if you stay right there, let's see, this time I put in a 7. 
all right it's just going to replace right there all right and if you don't want to keep looking at it at the bottom wherever your um, cursor is on that left hand side that little arrow, arrow right there I can just put a five there hit enter and then it's going to replace those values all right so you, it's an endless set of numbers that you can put in all right so um, just one little example there of showing you how to get to your table setup all right how to get to the table of values and switching between that ask and auto thanks for watching